Has anybody told you what the Bible says the earth is like? The Bible says the earth is flat and motionless. You heard it right. The word of God says the sun and moon are underneath the dome. But yeah, it seems like our fellow brother and sister in the faith several centuries before us, they were very aware of this idea. They seem to have been. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what I've found is in order to study something in scripture, it's important to keep it in its proper context, right? Somebody taught me that. One of the best tools we have for doing so is that it's one that's rarely used by believers, preachers, or even scholars today, biblical scholars. That tool I'm talking about is simply determining the setting in which right. the story is told, right? It sounds so basic, but the the setting in literature is the location in which the action of a narrative takes place. And that is this world, this earth, That's right? And That's the right. heavens that it's enclosed in, That's right. overhead. So if we ignore the setting, especially one with such unique and awe-inspiring descriptions as what the Creator has consistently described throughout His Word and through the prophets, if we ignore the setting, then a lot of the details of the story just aren't going to make sense. So much will just go right over our heads. So it's on our heart with this show to show you guys these tools so you can better understand the plan that is in the Bible in your hand. Another visual tool we've collected, if you'll go back to the slides, is these uh, you know illustrated Bibles that I've put together or I've, I've collected images of at the very least over the years. They help us to kind of reveal that setting as multiple illustrators at least have understood it. They're unconnected, different publishers, different centuries some of these are even in. Here's one from an authorized version of the Bible edited by John Sterling. I've seen a few people be able to pick this one up, searching on eBay, Amazon, wherever they could find it. But it's as if these illustrators, you can go to the next one. It's, like, illustr it's almost as if they just took the words and made a story out of it. Yeah. yeah. It's literally like all the all these different illustrators separately, individually, put out, you know, took out all the, the descriptions in the canon, at least that they had available to them, and, and then drew what they saw. It's, uh, it's so the, weird, Wes. Why didn't any of these illustrators draw the Earth as a ball amongst a whole bunch of other balls in a big void of space? Maybe one of them did. Is there another another slide after this? Maybe some of nope. them. Did. Oh, no, not uh, this guy either. That's, that's not what that is. <laughs> why aren't they doing that? Why are they? How are these such horrible artists? They should never work for the police department. These are horrible <laughs> <special> artists. <laughs> I don't know if we could find the culprit based on everything NASA tells us. If yeah, I don't, I don't think these guys listen too well to directions when they're reading a description. Or maybe. Because this maybe. does not look like the heliocentric model. These guys are poor drawers. No, right? What, where are the pillars coming from? It looks like there's a dome ceiling going on. There's waters above that dome. I oh don't remember goodness. being taught any of this in school. Do you guys? Cue the Greta Thunberg. How dare you? <laughs> Good one. Good one. There's there's more though. There's other ones of these, there is right? More. You can find these scattered out. This is a Catholic study Bible. I wouldn't personally recommend it, but it's one of the many ones that are out there that would uh kind of give you a, a, a feeling for what the the illustrator was trying to con convey yeah. and uh what they were seeing in the scriptures being conveyed consistently over and over from Genesis to Revelation. Go to the next one, please. There's another one. La Biblia Sagrada. Nice. Porque it's tiene finished. una yeah, Por tiene tiene una tierra plana y mm -hmm. bajo un domo y nice. permamento. The terra <laughs> and the oceano. That's right. Nice. Oh, I love their X for the shiol. I know it's the old. That's nice. <laughs> I that's guess nice. that's how you say it. Even in different languages, it seems like they're reading these words and coming to the same description of what's being said in Genesis and Psalms and Deuteronomy. And interesting, huh? They are another one. La Sacra Biblia. This I like huh? this one. Yeah. Yep. Bibia. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, look, yeah, they, better... they, they also included what we were going to talk about tonight, the Monte de Dio. Monte de Dio. At the very top, right? <laughs> yeah. You think uh, someone like Bibia. Michelangelo, if, if he was a real person, you think that uh, he was reading something like this and he looked at this sketch and went, ah, amateurs. It's entirely possible. And this happens to be one of the older ones. I want to say I, I saw this one to be four or 500 years old, somewhere in there. Nice. Yeah, this is actually one that I was able to come across myself in okay. real life, in real world. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Reader's Digest Bible. Found this up at a uh, local bookstore that we were doing Bible studies at here in my town. Same thing you're seeing on screen. Yeah. This is something you might could find in your local bookstore. Man, it, I tell you what, you know, Michael Heiser may have... Uh, when he came up with his logo software and he actually described the exact same depiction of creation with his uh logos bible software so that's modern scholar by the way um in both uh, ancient semitic and akkadian ancient languages 
uh, he read the Bible and he came up with the exact same illustration. What is wrong with these people? Can nobody read? Why aren't they putting the spinning balls in space? I don't understand. It's on the next page. It's crazy. There it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> same guy did that one, right? And I That's have right. this one as well. This is the Faith Life Study Bible. It's available in NIV and NKJV. Might be available in other ones, but yeah, they have a pretty detailed one here and it's nice and colored. It's updated, yep. modern looking. Yeah. With their depiction. But yeah, you can find this one. This one's real easy to find. You don't have to go hunting. It's not very old. They're still in publication and in print. But it's a nice tool to be able to show people that something in hand, you right. know, something yeah. to say, hey, y'all, y'all heard of the Bible, right? You guys are believers. Well, hey, here's a here's a Bible that has yeah. an illustration of what the earth, what the Bible says the earth looks like. Have you all ever has anybody ever shown you this? It's a fun tool. It's awesome. And unfortunately, they'll just, you know, guard your heart, uh, gather your patience. And sometimes yeah. even when you show them pictures and even when you tell them, even modern scholars read the Bible's descriptions of the creation and show a firm recovered flat land of earth. They will look at you and go, nah. -uh. So you just be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> the, that's uh, what we... the disbelief is strong out there. That's right. That's part of why we do this show is to help you be yeah. prepared so that yeah. you can share these kind of things in confidence. That's and right. so here's a uh, Harper's Bible Dictionary. Shout out Miss Wildly Unpopular in the chat. Y'all go subscribe to Wildly Unpopular on YouTube. And she found this in her own library in the collection they have at their home. And the definition that they chose to use for the word heaven, I found interesting. Would you read that one over? Yeah. So they're, they call it heaven. Um, <laughs> essentially, it's the expanse of space that seems to be over the earth like a dome. Ferment also is what it's referred to. So that's where the Greek actually uses that translated word as expanse a lot of times. It's from the word stereoma. That's but right. the, uh, the word firmament actually is derived from the Latin, which comes from firmamenta. And all of it comes from the Hebrew, which means rakia. So, Correct. Yeah. yeah. The expanse of space that seems to be over the earth like a dome. It like seems dome. to be. Seems and this, to. this dictionary definition says the same thing about a firmament too, right? It's a vaulted, vault of heaven understood as a solid dome. So are we just to believe that people that that write lexicons, concordances and dictionaries are just insane? Is that what we're thinking here? Is that what like they're I mean, what is there a conspiracy to to rewrite history and make things look like a dome over the earth? Or is this what everyone understood for all the time, except for the last 120 years? From all of my studies, ancient cultures as a whole predominantly displayed yeah. an enclosed cosmology. Yeah, that's what we found as well. Yeah. And just to review right there, it was Genesis 1, 6 through 8 said that God created a vaulted, solid, domed structure, a ceiling over the earth and named it heaven. If that's not something you're familiar with, I'd encourage everybody to check out Uncommon Ground Season 1, Episode 1, Sky's the Limit. We went over this in much fuller detail than we have the chance or the time to do tonight. But yeah, that's that's what the word says, believe it or not. It's amazing, right? So every time we see the word heaven in the Bible, it's actually the name given to this domed structure. Correct. Wow, that's crazy because the word heavens in the Bible like over 500 times. It is. It is. So are you saying that, that a description of what God created is actually used in the text over 500 times? That's what we're saying. Yes, sir. <laughs> let my uh, <laughs> let my coyness be alarming to all of you guys, right? That this is a uh, this is truly something that the modern mind has overlooked. Because since childhood, they just told us that we live in a ball in space, floating around at ridiculous speeds, and no one can calculate. And good luck with, uh, you know, a three-part problem with modeling it according to physics. <laughs> but they basically say that for you to even understand the definition of this word calls you what a conspiracy theorist, a fundamentalist. A I that's why I call myself the fundamentalist. Um, because I'm like, well, you actually spelled fundamentalist wrong. It's fundamentalist. <laughs> Let's get that right. So essentially, I just want to believe what the Bible says, Wes. I mean, I, I feel like I just stay. It's easier to stay on the straight and narrow if I just believe what the Bible says. Very much so. Okay. 